So hello everyone, I'm Francisco Pedrosin and this is uh, the presentation for the SPLAS SSPR 2020 conference of uh, our work which is entitled um, Supervised Semantic Discovery through Visual Pattern Detection. So the motivation behind our work is uh, based on this challenge. We want to find visual patterns and uh, indeed what is a visual pattern? For example, one can say that this uh, logo here is a visual pattern or the Y composing this logo is a pat visual pattern or the wall product is a, is a visual pattern. So one thing is that we have to focus our interpretation on a particular semantic level because uh, each, uh, each scale gives us a new semantic. So for example here you can see we have two different uh, semantic levels. And uh, in particular, we want to span over these uh, semantics uh, levels. And so we want to go from, from the macro area to the micro, micro semantic level. And we do so through a fast and uh, fully supervised visual pattern detector. And it is composed on, in two phases, or by two phases. The first one is the filtering phase and the second one is the clustering phase and the whole procedure moves from syntax to the semantic. So the first uh, step is to select, uh, to extract some features, and uh, we do so by selecting key points, um, the, the edges of the, of the image, and we select these key points through Kenny, and then we compute the descriptors. And the motivation is that all the patterns have boundaries, so that's why we uh, exploit the edges of the image. So now we have a syntactical uh, description of, the, of these key points, but uh, we don't want to retain all the key points. We also want to filter all the noisy key points, which are not part of a um, visual pattern. And we do so by exploiting this idea, the idea of the, this intuition that uh, is that all the patterns can be encoded through geometrical correspondences. And we call these uh, geometrical correspondences uh, splashes. So uh, you can see that if we take this, uh, for example, this pattern, visual pattern here, which is the spoon, all the key points falling inside here, uh, would have uh, all the, sim uh, the similar, um, share the similar geometrical correspondences between all the, uh, all the instances of the pattern, visual pattern. So we do so, uh, so we compute these splashes for each key point and through an accumulator space where we uh, superimpose uh, all these splashes, we uh, have uh, this peak formation inside this uh, accumulator, uh, accumulator space, which allows us to threshold and retain all the meaningful uh, key points that we then can uh, um, uh, back project on, uh, on the image plane. So if we superimpose a lot of uh, these splashes, which are part of, uh, of a pattern, you see this, um, we have uh, the accumulator, uh, accumulator space, which has a lot of um, peak formations. And by thresholding it and retaining all the meaningful points, we get the, these semantic hotspots. The second phase is uh, based on uh, this clustering phase. And we start by uh, Compute a segmentation of, uh, of the image uh, by computing super pixels through the Slick algorithm. And this is very important because it's the main parameter which allows us to span over different semantic levels. And uh, we want to connect now these super pixels and uh, we connect them by, through, uh, by uh, modeling um, uh, the problem uh, with a graph, so where each node is a super pixel and it, the edge weight is calculated through the splashes. So if we have a mutual agreement between splashes um, falling into, um, into super pixels, we put a vote of one. And so we connect uh, all the super pixels through the splashes, and now we want to extract the semantic categories. And the, all the visual patterns now are encoded as densest uh, quasi-clicks inside this, part, this, um, this graph. So what we want to do is uh, just to extract these uh, dense uh, subgraphs. And we do so um, with a procedure, which is uh, an iterative procedure based on graph edge corrosion. So we, co we start corroding all the graph 
right? And uh, by um, optimizing this density score, we achieve uh, uh, that we disconnect the graph and we get, uh, eventually we get uh, all these dense connected components. And these connected components uh, correspond to semantic groups. So this is the visualization of uh, the original image. And you can see these are the, um, the subgraphs and the, the, the correspondence uh, and the correspondent uh, visual detection, pattern detection. So we compare them as two methods and uh, we want to uh, highlight the fact that uh, the research community lost interest in this problem after 2013 and almost all methods find single pattern and they usually do it, do it through by fitting a grid. And uh, while our advantage is that uh, we have uh, we find multiple patterns and we provide a segmentation. But we also had to introduce uh, in order to assess our, the goodness of our algorithm, we uh, introduced um, a new measure which is called new consistency. And uh, the aim is that uh, we want to assess the fact that uh, all the patterns instances uh, should fall on similar uh, ground truth object. So for example here, the pattern, the yellow pattern here falls on this yoga um, uh, label here and uh, it falls on object one four times. So the mood consistency is uh, computed as this. So we take the mode of the object ID, which is, four, which is one, and the cardinality of the mode is four, divided by the number of uh, instances found, which is four, and so we have a, co a complete consistency. Let's say, for example, that the yellow pattern falls on a, um, a different object, um, on a, an object two in this case. So we have uh, that the pattern falls four times in the uh, in object one and one time in object two. So the mode is one and the cardinality of the mode is four. But the number of but the, the number of uh, object instances uh, number of uh, instances is five, so we have less consistency because we have a mistake. And we do so for each pattern, and then we take the mean, and that's why we, it's called mu consistency. Uh, we also introduced a new data set which is uh, divided into semantic uh, levels. So one is uh, all the um, all the, ob uh, um, all the objects which are made by the same brand share the same ID and the second one is the, um, it's the second uh, semantic level number two where uh, each product instance, exact product instance, share the same ID. And you can see that we achieve a higher, very high a new consistency, a good recall and in particular, we have less uh, we have uh, less consistency in the second uh, second uh, um, semantic level because uh, it's much more uh, it's much more uh, closer to micro micro semantic level, so it's difficult, much much more difficult. And uh, we also uh, did a. Uh, uh, the analysis an analysis by um, uh, moving this number of super pixels retrieved and uh, the important thing is here that uh, we are very fast because uh, uh, we go from five seconds to 11 seconds we provide a segmentation in uh, almost uh, 11 seconds and uh, here we have uh, the quantitative comparison uh, and you see on the right the, some visualization, we achieve uh, optimal results. Uh, we compared against uh, a method which, the only method which was uh, able to find more than one pattern, which is 14. Here you can see it finds, uh, for example, this is a qualitative uh, comparison, you see there are, um, here they found just the face, uh, let's say face uh, pattern, and here they have more than one pattern. And this is the only deep learning based uh, uh, method, and they fit a grid. And while uh, our, um, our results are much more, let's say, interesting, because they, we provide also segmentation mask and find more than one pattern. So the contribution of this work is the better formalization of uh, what is a pattern detection through the introduction of semantic levels and uh, the introduction of a publicly available data set to do so. And we also introduced a new metric to assess the consistency of the detection, which is called new consistency. And uh, all the code and the data can be found at this link. And uh, thanks.